All right, hello everybody. Today I wanna to show you three paintings. The first of which I did quite a while ago and I was hesitant to show it for a couple of reasons, for the video production quality and how it turned out in general. I went to the beach and stood there on the coast looking out and tried to record the video and paint uh, the sunset, I mean the sunrise and what it looked like to me and try to it was an ab one of these abstract paintings, you know, and it, it, it was all kind of uh, it uh, didn't it didn't come together well. The painting itself kind of got lost in the sunrise, and the camera didn't know where to focus, you know, on the sunrise or on the painting, and it kind of flitted back and forth, and so you couldn't really tell what I was doing. But the worst part of it of all. Uh, was that before the sun fully came up and the wind really got blowing across the, the beach there, was that there were these awful thick swarms of some sort of gnat that was just crawling all over me, biting and chewing on me. And it was, these gnats were so thick all over me that they were inside my eyelids and crawling up my nose and just in, in, in the hair on my scalp and by, they were just biting my skin and every I could I could barely see the gnats they were so tiny but I could feel them crawling on my it was anyway so I painted quickly and maybe this changed the my painting I'm not sure like the fact that I, I wanted to finish this painting I came all the way out here it was not the beach closest to my house I drove kind of down the coast a little bit to do this because I wanted to go to a specific spot um, so I kind of I was like I'm gonna finish this painting I'm gonna do this painting the the the, you know, the sunrise looked amazing, so I was determined to do this, but also I was kind of painting through a bit of torture, and by the time I was done with it, I was covered in all these little red bumps all over my arms, and so, I don't know, but it was a weird kind of torturous painting experience with a great view, however, and that's what it looked like at the end there. Anyways, and then a couple weeks later, I sat down, I was kind of in a weird funk all day, but I finally managed to channel this funk into sitting down to do a couple of these paintings and I squeezed out some paint. Um, I bought some slightly nicer paints into my little Tupperware palette that I use and the blue came out really gunky and it's like sticky and it was just like a, the wrong consistency compared to all the rest of the paints. Uh, so I scraped the blue back out of the palette and I had some leftover blue from previous paints that I had used, like slightly cheaper. So I had cheaper blue and slightly less cheap other colors. There, the, these other paints I used were only like half a step up as far as like maybe quality or maybe, I don't, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I should just go ahead and get either usually nice paints or just keep using cheap paints. I don't know. I'm just kind of waffling around with the quality of paints I'm using. I don't know how much it really matters. It's, it's, they're all just pretty much equally fun to squish around on the, on the, on the, here I'm using canvas boards. I'm using canvas boards for these second two paintings. For the first one I used a wooden board. Anyways, I gotta take the blue board, the blue tube back and get a refund for it or replace it or something. Anyways, for these canvas boards and for the wooden board, I'm just using a palette knife to paint with. And it's all very fun. I would recommend it to anyone. There's no, like, uh, there's nothing like you gotta know. There's no classes you gotta take to squish out. I use red, yellow, blue, black, white paints. Red, yellow, blue. Those are like some sort of primary colors or something. I, I've talked about this before. I have no idea how that stuff works. I just like looked it up somewhere once, like, which basic colors do you need? Then I bought those ones. And uh, you can squish them together, make other colors, so on and so forth. And then you just smush them around on the on under paper canvas board wall whatever you want to do it's, you know b baby <laughs> like in another one of my videos and uh just have fun with it it's just it just looks cool almost no matter what you do that's what i found out it's and it's kind of therapeutic get you a cup of coffee or tea or you know ginger ale whatever you're into and just start smushing you can do it you don't have to be like some, you know, hoity-toity, snooty, fancy artist type. Uh, just go eat. There's very cheap paints at the paint store. And there's also very cheap things to paint on. And you don't need a lot of room. You don't need a big old easel like I'm using. You, I don't know. There's not a whole lot of things holding you back from doing this. You just need to take a minute to do it. 
but if you want to take a minute to do whatever other things you're doing already, that's fine too. Anyways, I like how this second one turned out. It's kind of a weird uh, gradient kind of going around in a circle, like greenish, yellow, bluishy, blacky, maybe and then going back around. And then I started out for my this last one, instead of using a palette knife for most of it, I grabbed this weird triangle, uh, like a, just a plastic triangle for drawing triangles and a, kind of a ruler. And I used that as a palette knife instead for squ squishing and scraping the paint around. And I, I didn't mean to use, I didn't ex first plan on using it for the whole painting. I just wanted to kind of cover the, the canvas with some paint, but then I ended up using it for almost the whole thing. And at first I was discouraged and I didn't think it was turning out very well, but uh, after I had kind of almost covered the whole thing with it, I stepped back. And uh, after I stepped back, I was kind of a taken, taken aback uh, by how cool it looked. Sometimes you're too close to the painting while you're working on it, and you, you know it's like taking up too much of your field of vision. You don't really get the whole picture. You don't see how big it looks. But then once you step back a little bit, you see you see a little more. You kind of no. It's it's good to step back a little bit. I don't know. Yes, just do it. You know, take a few breaks. Breaks are good too, even if it's just one one twenty seconds every now and then. Step back and breathe and blink a few times and then sit back down and get back into the detail work there. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Y'all take it easy. Goodbye.